What's going on guys, this is Rob. Uh, if you guys enjoy my content, make sure you hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that little bell so you never miss out on my sexy voice. Okay, so those people who are new to Marvel Comics and who are watching this video on Too Powerful for the Marvel Cinematic Universe are probably just like, who the hell is Nimrod? <laughs> <laughs> Assuming that this video even garners enough people that, that care to watch it anyway. Uh, Nimrod, Nimrod is, God, Nimrod is crazy powerful. Okay, so in order to understand Nimrod, we need to wind the clock back to Days of Future Past. So, the idea behind this story is different from the movie that you guys saw, uh, to a degree. It's, it's a little bit different. The idea behind this story was that somewhere along the line, Mystique reformed the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. And when she did, she used them to assassinate Senator Robert Kelly, Professor Charles Xavier of the X-Men, and Moore McTaggart, who was a friend of the X-Men and a mutant geneticist. She's actually one of the people who helped to help to found New Mutants. The idea behind this was that by assassinating those figures, Mystique wanted to basically make a play and show people that mutants were not to be trifled with. The opposite ended up happening. What ended up happening in response to this is that initially the sitting president wanted to pass the Mutant Registration Act, but the Mutant Registration Act was shot down by the Supreme Court as a violation of the rights of mutants because they were considered U.S. citizens when they were born and born in the United States. So that meant that the, the Registration Act was basically scuttled. In response to this, the sitting president reactivated the Sentinel program. Now, the Sentinel program had been deactivated since the death of Bolivar Trask, and originally it was supposed to have been handed over to Stephen Lang in the main Marvel Universe. But in the Days of Future Past timeline, uh, it was just reactivated, and when it did, the Sentinels were basically sent out to basically start tracking down mutants and to contain and control them. The problem with this was that the Sentinels began to grow autonomous, which is to say they became intelligent beings. And what they did is they rationalized that because mutants are an offshoot of humanity, which is to say the next stage in human evolution, at their base level, mutants are humans. And so what this did is it set in motion the Sentinels just following logical programming and taking over the entirety of North America. Now, in the movie Days of Future Past, you had humans and you had Sentinels working together. In the Days of Future Past comic, the Sentinels conquered everything. Humans, mutants, the whole nine yards, they were all basically, you know, captured and they were thrown into internment camps. They would put these collars around people's necks. They would, they would basically neutralize their mutant powers. And in turn, they would just kind of go forward until the day they died. Now, what ended up happening here is that in the Days of Future Past timeline, Jean Grey and Cyclops had a daughter named Rachel. In this universe, Rachel Grey had realized that there was a way to stop the Days of Future Past by going back in time and stopping the assassination of Senator Robert Kelly, Professor X, and Maura McTaggart. Now, at the same time, he had a lot of other things going on. For example, you had uh, Wolverine and the Canadian Wilderness, who was kind of orchestrating the Canadian resistance against the Sentinels, because remember, it was North America. So you're talking about like Canada and the United States. And then you had like various other factions here and there who are working to rebel and so on and so forth. Anyway, what ends up happening is Rachel Summers, Kitty Pride, Colossus, Wolverine, Magneto, and Storm, I think, managed to, uh, to ba basically, oh, I'm sorry, and Franklin Richards managed to make an escape from the Sentinel concentration camp and make their way to the Baxter building, which used to be the home of the Fantastic Four before the Sentinels killed them and almost every other superhero on Earth. And so the Sentinels had basically taken over the Baxter building because it was so technologically advanced and then modified it to just create a ton of themselves. Because here's the thing, that's what made the Days of Future Past so bad, is that the Sentinels, it was a, it was a war of attrition. There were just so many of them. They, they, they weren't really that powerful. It's just there were so many. So like, if a mutant was spotted out there in the wild, the Sentinels would send like 50 units, which would just be overwhelming force, and they would either destroy the mutant depending on the level of the threat they, they posed, or they would just capture them and take them back to uh, to the concentration camps. But the fact remains that with this group having made their escape, they of course free themselves from their collars, and then what happens is Rachel Summers sends the mind of Kitty Pride into the past. Now while that's happening, there's also an actual effort by the, the rest of the group to kind of destroy the headquarters of the Sentinel base. They're all annihilated in the process, they're all basically totally destroyed. They never stood a chance in the first place that the Sentinels knew they were coming, but the mind of Kitty Pride goes into the past and it basically warns the X-Men of the impending assassination and the X-Men stop it. After that happens, Kitty Pride's mind leaves her past body and goes back to the days of future past. The problem with this is that in Marvel Comics, they have what's called branch universe theory. And the idea here is that at any given time, a story that's depicted in the future is the absolute future. The days of future past was the guaranteed future of the Marvel Universe until it was stopped. Then the question becomes, how do you come from a future that never happened? And so what Marvel did is they made the Days of Future Past an alternate reality. They said, okay, so the Days of Future Past still happened, but that's in an alternate universe. The future of the main Marvel universe is now that Days of Future Past never happened. And so when Kitty Pride's mind went to the future, went back to the future, no pun intended, when Kitty Pride's mind went back to the future, then basically nothing had changed as far as she was concerned because she and Rachel Summers did not realize it was an alternate reality. And so trying their best to basically orchestrate or I guess continue this rebellion against the Sentinels, they ultimately came across this uh, prototype Sentinel that was being developed 
named Nimrod. And where Kitty Pride and Rachel initially tried to stop it, Kitty Pride was destroyed and Rachel jumped back to the present day, which kicks off Days of Future Present, for those of you guys who know about that story. But the idea here is that with Nimrod having been activated and realizing the threat that Rachel Summers posed as a potential host for the Phoenix Force, Nimrod followed her back. Now, Nimrod as a Sentinel is crazy powerful. And the reason why I say this is because Nimrod was designed to be the ultimate Sentinel. He was a prototype created by Sentinels. So think of like the T-1000 from Terminator 2 created by Skynet, created by the Terminators. It's a prototype that's designed to be the most advanced version at that point in time. The difference here is that what made Nimrod so dangerous is that despite the fact that he was a robot, he had powers, different things like that, what made Nimrod so dangerous is that if you were a mutant and faced off against him, or even just like a superpowered being, you didn't really have to be a mutant per se, but if you were a being with powers that faced off against him, Nimrod would analyze your genealogy, determine what your power was, and then develop systems to combat it. So if you're Thor, Nimrod would analyze Thor and realize that the hammer of Mjolnir is weaker than adamantium, or I guess kind of sometimes, it depends on the story. Uh, but in turn, Nimrod would encase himself in adamantium. He would he would automatically alter his physical body to be that of adamantium, and then the hammer of Thor would be useless. And then he would turn around and augment himself to give himself strength that's superior to Thor, and then take Thor apart piece by piece. In the case of like Cyclops, if Cyclops fires off his optic beams at, at Nimrod, Nimrod will analyze Cyclops, realize that his optic beams are concussive, and Nimrod would alter the physical structure of his body to make it more dense, so that when the optic blast hit him, that basically it wouldn't affect him at all. You know, now, now here's the other crazy thing too. Here's the other thing that makes him so dangerous. Nimrod can be defeated. Like he can be technically beaten, but Nimrod can never truly be destroyed. And the reason why is because Nimrod will always reform himself. You'll have to like phase him out of existence or like incinerate him all the way down to like the smallest form of matter. Otherwise he'll reconstitute. He's got like a cybernetic version of Wolverine's healing factor basically. He's got all kinds of crazy powers. He's a lot like the Fury. Now that I think about it, he's a lot like the Fury from the old Mad Jim Jaspers comics. Like a being that was designed to adapt to everything he fought. So for those of you guys who saw the Days of Future Past movie, imagine the Sentinels like that, except that was Nimrod. Now the difference is that the Sentinels would automatically adjust based on the powers of a person. Uh, with Nimrod, like it's a thinking, feeling thing. Like he would function accordingly and he was autonomous. So he could function in and of himself. Now eventually that all changes. When Nimrod and Master Mold merge together, they go forward as Bastion, which is like a whole different thing. Kind of weird. You get into Operation Zero Tolerance and, and different stories like that. But what we're talking about here is a is a, a future Sentinel powerful enough to adapt to anything. Now that begs the question, what happens if Nimrod faces off against like the Incredible Hulk? Well, the Incredible Hulk does not have a finite limit to his powers. Can Nimrod defeat Thanos or something like that? And Marvel Comics, we've never seen that. We've never seen Nimrod fight Thanos before, so we don't really know. We can largely assume he could, but the problem with this is that the Days of Future Past did not go on long enough for us to know whether or not the Sentinels had set their sights on places beyond Earth, right? Like in Days of Future Past, North America is basically destroyed in a nuclear bombardment, and that eliminates the Sentinels in their entirety. But we don't really know if they were looking to set their sights beyond Earth, and if they were, then whether or not they were they were looking at like the capabilities of Thanos or somebody along those lines. If I were a betting man, I'd bet all the money all the money in my pockets to all the money in your pockets that Nimrod could pro like probably could not defeat Thanos because Thanos is just so powerful. But that's what makes Nimrod so dangerous is he'll always reform. Uh, he can just reconstitute himself from from damage, and he can he can alter his body's physical structure and his various powers based on who he's fighting at that point in time. Not only that, because he's a Sentinel, he can also tap into computerized systems. So you're talking about like a one man army, right? Like let's say let's say Nimrod shows up on Earth in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and like the Avengers. So like Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans and like Chris Hemsworth, you know, and like Blackwood, all those characters, they all team up to fight Nimrod. They would get absolutely annihilated. I mean, they would they would be destroyed, no questions asked. And it wouldn't even be funny. It would just be a massacre. Like you guys thought Ultron was okay. Ultron's got nothing on Nimrod. Like 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 in the movies, mm -mm, no way. I mean, like like say like Iron Man shows up. Okay, well then Iron Man gets depowered, right? It would be like Punisher versus the Marvel Universe, right? Like when Iron Man got locked inside his own armor and died inside his own suit of armor, it's like it's the craziest thing. Like Punisher's walking by the Iron Man suit, and it's like like they say it was they say it was like three days or five days before the screaming finally stopped. Like Iron Man literally died. Like he was just locked inside his own suit and died there. Pretty messed up. But that's literally something Nimrod could do. Just like tap into the into Iron Man's armor, like hack his suit and then shut it down. Like Captain America, he whatever man, he's got a shield. He's out the window. Black Widow, Hawkeye, they would get decimated. No questions asked. The only people who would really seem to be able to stand a chance, stand a chance in so far as like they would not die as fast would be like Thor or the Incredible Hulk. The Incredible Hulk's the only person I might give the advantage to because the Incredible Hulk's got unlimited strength. So the only way for Nimrod to defeat the Hulk would be to basically amp up his physical strength to beyond where the Hulk is at at that point in time. But Nimrod cannot increase his strength infinitely, at least not that we're aware of. That's one of the things that belongs to the Incredible Hulk and this unique
unique to him. But again, things kind of get a little hairy here because when you look at the Days of Future Past story, the Sentinels killed the Incredible Hulk. So we don't know exactly how he died. We don't know if they killed him when he was Bruce Banner. We don't know if they killed him when he was the Incredible Hulk and they were just that powerful. Oh, uh, we don't really know exactly how all that went down. We just know that they killed the Incredible Hulk. So again, it's it's kind of crazy, but literally it's Nimrod, the ultimate Sentinel. I mean, just uber powerful. I mean, just, just crazy powerful. Here's the other crazy thing. Nimrod can shapeshift. He can make himself look like a person. So they wouldn't even know it was Nimrod. The Avengers are like, oh, well, let's go find Nimrod, guys. And like, they're walking down, you know, walking around the city of New York. They could pass Nimrod 50 times and never know, you know, and then he just like takes, just takes them all out, you know, individually. Nimrod could show up to, to Iron Man looking like Captain America and then kill him. It's just one of those crazy things. It's just a, a crazy level of power for a robot, you know, to, to be able to pull all that, all that stuff off. But in any event, with that being said, guys, we're going to bring this video to an end. If you are new here to Comics Explained, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like and I will catch you all later. Peace.